Hello there. I'm going to tell you a little bit about our wiper motor kits and how to install them. When you open the box, this is what you get. You get the wiper motor with a cable. You get a clamp for mounting the wiper motor and a rubber base that goes under the motor when you clamp it up. You get two wheel boxes and you get a length of Bundy tube with the nut already on it and both ends flared. But before we start with the installation, let's have a little look inside this wiper motor just to see what's going on. This is the cable that drives the wheel boxes. It's not like a speedo cable, it doesn't rotate, it just moves in and out of the wiper motor through the wheel box. And this is the gear wheel which is driven by the motor. When the wiper motor drives this gear, the arm which is attached to the cable here moves in and out as the gear rotates. Several different sweep angles are available for this gear um, and this one is 110 degrees. And here's a wheel box. You'll get two of these with the kit. This is the part that comes up through the scuttle. If I take the back plate off, you can see in there there's a gear wheel. If I rotate the spindle the gear wheel turns. There are teeth on this gear wheel that mesh with the cable. Now I've said before that this cable doesn't rotate, it moves left and right. So if I put this gear wheel and this wheel box on the cable, you have to feed it through from the end. So you can see that as the cable moves in and out of the wiper motor through the wheel box it rotates the wheel and of course rotates the spindle on the other end which is attached to the blade that noise you're hearing is just the cable rubbing on the end of the bench this system is pretty much silent now I've made up a dummy scuttle and windscreen and a piece of aluminium and a little piece of perspex and I've mounted the two wheel boxes through the scuttle. So to fit the wheel boxes you first need to drill a 16mm hole for each one. Roughly 30mm from the, from the windscreen, it doesn't really matter because the, the wiper blades are sprung. So I've put these two at 30mm centres from the windscreen. You'll see the two spacers that come with the wheel box are both cut at 45 degrees. So one goes on the bottom, the large one, the other one goes on the top. Now you need to angle this hole with a file so that the wheel box comes through at an angle. Which means that when it's all screwed together, and the nut that the spindle on your wheel box is pretty much 90 degrees to the windscreen surface. For this demonstration, I'm just going to mount the motor a few inches from the wiper boxes on the same scuttle but it could be anywhere it could be down on the a-post through a bent piece of tube you can mount the motor a foot two foot away if you need to i've offered up the clamp making sure that the cable and the motor and the wheel boxes are all in line 
and I've marked and drilled a couple of holes for the fixing bolts and that rubber pad sits under the motor there and we bolt it all together. There we go, wiper motor's fixed. So once we have the wiper motor and the wheel boxes mounted, it's time to cut the tube, the Bundy tube. Now the Bundy tube that you get with the kit is flared at both ends and it already has the nut on it fitted which goes on the nose of the wiper motor. Here, on the wheel boxes, you'll see two grooves, about 20 mil in from each end. These grooves are the parts that locate the flares on the Bundy tube and stop it moving. So we need to cut the Bundy tubes to length flare the ends and fit them, one between the wiper motor and the first wheel box and one between the first and second wheel boxes and if you want to a little bit three or four inches at the end of the second wheel box where you will cut the cable to length. Now I'm holding the flared end of the tube in position on the nose of the wiper motor and I'm just going to mark the center of this groove in the wheel box on the tube. I'm using our Pro Flare tool with the uh, 5 16 dies 8mm to flare the end of this tube. Just lay the tube in Put the top die on and get the tube adjusted so it's just sitting flush with the front of the dies. Swing across the clamp, tighten it down. This is the press die section. Op 1 puts a single flare on the tube. Slide it along to Op 2. And that gets a double flare. There you go. Nice flared end to the tube. And you can do the same the other end once you've determined the length. If you haven't got a proper flaring tool, there is a simple way you can make a flare on the end of your tube. I'll show you how. Okay, here's the Bundy tube that we're going to flare. I've got a little pair of needle nose pliers here and I've wrapped some masking tape around one of the jaws, about five mil in from the end, just as a depth guide. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna work my way around this tube, give me a little tweak every time. I'll give it a little turn. So I'll just turn it a few degrees and a little tweak, just putting the pliers three or four mil into the end of the tube. A few more degrees, another little tweak. So you're gradually flaring the end of the tube out bit by bit. And eventually you'll end up with a, a pretty good acceptable flare, which will locate just fine in the groove in the wheel box. Now I've cut the tube to length, I put the nut back on and I flared the second end for the wheel box and we've just got to put it together. And I've taken the wheel boxes off because you've got to slide the tube all the way down the cable. Don't forget in your last assembly just put some grease on it. And do up the tube nut. Now slide the first wheel box on, feeding the cable through it. And 
and there's the second flare sitting in the little groove I put that back on temporarily and that locates it all tight and secure now we've got to do the next tube between the two wheel boxes okay there's the second tube fitted and here comes the second wheel box so here's the second wheel box fitted in the scuttle you may want to fit a third wheel box so you have a triple wiper system so just repeat the last few steps cutting another tube but if it's just a two wiper system you can now cut the end of the cable uh, recommend probably four or five inches left on the cable because don't forget it's moving in and out all the time we can cut the cable with a grinding wheel on a little angle grinder and cut the final piece of tube with a single flare for, for the wheel box location at this end and make it just a little bit longer than the length of cable sticking out right we're looking at the underside of the scuttle of course and the inside of the car behind the dash we've got the wiper motor mounted both wheel boxes all the tubes in place and on the top of the scuttle there we go there's a the screen there's a scuttle there's the two wheel boxes job done and if you fancy a bit of bling we sell a chrome ferrule that goes over with a wheel box spindle and a chrome nut so there we are I've made some shortened arms and I've fitted a rigid blade on this one and a sprung blade on this one all set to go before we wrap up this little video there are a couple of other points that may be of interest how do I know which sweep angle to choose when I'm buying my wiper kit? Well, if your car is, is a kit car or something made by a manufacturer, they will probably have that information and they'll tell you which one to choose and where to mount your wheel boxes. But if it's a special or a custom installation, then you need to mock everything up on, on a desk or on a big board with your wiper arms and your blades and you can use one of these which is um, a very simple angle finder you can buy it on ebay for a couple of quid you can set it to 90 degrees here and you can mock up from your wheel box position the sweep angle remember the 90 degrees can be anywhere you can mount the arm on the spindle in any position so your 90 degrees can start there and finish there always bear in mind where the windscreen pillar is and the top of the windscreen and what length wiper blades you're going to use you can choose between 90 and 140 degrees we had several several options something else that often causes confusion is right park or left park wiper arms now if you're sitting in the driver's seat, right park is in front of you on your right and left park is in front of the passenger on the left. A right park wiper arm has a crank like this in the arm so that when the arm is mounted on the wheel box and it's in the park position, the blade is parallel with the bottom of the screen. And a left park arm like this one has the crank in the opposite direction so that when it's in the park position the blade is parallel with the screen in front of the passenger and one final thing how do you choose or set whether your wipers park on the left or on the right this is another good reason for mocking everything up on the bench before you drill any holes or mount any of your components there's two different ways here one option is to reverse your wheel boxes let's turn them around 180 degrees depending on your installation it may be possible to do this after you've fitted them and the other option is to remove the gear wheel from the motor 
turn it over and you'll see there are a couple of holes opposite this little white slipper pad. Just get a little screwdriver, lever out the little piece of white nylon and move it round to the opposite two holes and press it back in. That will reverse the park position. But be careful when you put the gear wheel back into the motor. There's a spring washer around the shaft that must be compressed before you put the external washer and circle it back on. So that's about it. If you have any more questions or queries, just give us a call. Cheers for now.